good morning good evening good afternoon good night whatever time it is you're checking this out man i'm so glad you guys are here as we continue our study in first peter it's been some good stuff as we've been learning more about who we are in christ which is so 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 important man just to be grounded and rooted in who our place is in the person of jesus and where our place is in the kingdom of heaven and how we can see that there is going to be a great culmination when the Lord comes back to get us as his possession. It's going to be so good. And then why? Because of those things, we live the life that we live. That's amazing. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Uh, but if it's your first time here, this is Pauline Theology's Daily Devotional. And glad you're here. If it's your not your first time here and you're checking back in, glad you're here as well, man. This has been awesome time as we've been sharing a little bit of what we see in the scriptures about God and about what Peter is actually saying to the, the churches he's writing to about humanity as Christians and humanity as sinful man and then how we can apply this to our lives. So I'm glad you guys are here and let's jump into it. We are in First Peter chapter 2 verse 11 and 12 today. It says, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of your flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Well, Peter is saying as sojourners, which I, I love that because what is he trying to do when he says that? He, he, he's saying that this is not your home. Your kingdom is elsewhere. Your kingdom is in heaven or in the new earth, the new heavens and the new earth specifically. And he'll he'll talk about that. I believe it's in Second Peter, but um, yeah, we are not a part of this world. This is not our home. Now, just because this is not our home doesn't mean that we're not to to allow this place to prosper, to wish good for this place. Like in Jeremiah, we see it says, "Plant gardens and uh, have families because uh, you're going to be here and seek the welfare of where you're at." So it's not that we're not seeking the welfare, but just remembering. That this is not the end goal. This is not the destination. The destination is with Christ in the new heavens and the new earth. Now, there's also another thing that goes along with this because it's our identity again. See, Peter continually from the very beginning of this book, from the very beginning of the letter, he has established who we are in Christ. He has established the gospel is where we are and how we live. And when he says this, I urge you as sojourners, he is reestablishing that connection to remind us that we are a people of God. Earlier, he says we are a holy nation. You see, that nation is the kingdom of God. We are a people who are a part of the kingdom of God. But what does he urge us to do as sojourners and exiles? Well, he says that because of who we are in Christ, because we are sojourners, because we are in the presence of the king now and not yet, but because we are part of this everlasting kingdom in Christ, he says, abstain from the passions of the flesh. And they wage war against your soul. So abstain from the passions of the flesh. First off, I, I want to say that we do have to understand this in the context of what he's talking about and what he's writing about. And I think specifically that the passion of the flesh in which he's talking about here is that desire for vengeance, that desire for retribution, that desire for uh, doing uh, that desire for attacking or repaying evil with evil i think that is uh i think that is one of the things that peter is talking about here but i i don't want to say that's the only thing i think that's the primary goal is to remind these people that hey because they revile us doesn't mean that we revile back just because they hate us doesn't mean that we hate back just because they malign us doesn't mean that we malign back we've got to abstain from that passion because that's a fleshly desire. It's not a godly desire. But I also think that he's talking about 
the same things that Paul is talking about in his letters when he says the evidence of the flesh are unmistakable. That we need to be feeding the spirit and not the flesh. And those are the the uh, disobeying parents, sexual immorality. That's the hating, the, the uh, unrighteous anger. I think that is what he's talking about as well. That unwholesome speech. Those are the things that we need to abstain from. That is the life that we need to abstain from. And so he has a why, too. It says, because we are sojourners and exiles, or because, so when I say sojourners and exiles, we should remember that means Christians or children of the king or um, citizens of the heavenly kingdom. So because we are citizens of the heavenly kingdom, we should abstain from these sinful desires. Now, he has a reason, like I said. He has a why. It says, keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So we talked about how God has called us as a, a chosen race, a holy priesthood, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that he's called us as his own possession. And it says that we should proclaim these. Uh, and the reason he's done this is so that we could proclaim his excellencies. Well, this is exactly how we proclaim these excellencies, is that we abstain from living evil lives so that when people talk to us or malign us and we don't malign back, well, then they see our good deeds. They'd be like, I can't believe this brother acts this way. Even when we treat him horribly, even when we treat him unbecomingly, he still loves us. He still cares for us. What is it about him? But in that sense, they already know what it is about him because they're, they're doing these things specifically because of Jesus. Jesus is that stumbling stone that they're falling over. And so whenever they see that they're still good people, that their lives are still honorable, then they become saved. Their hearts change. God uses that to, with his, along with his spirit to change the heart, to conform and transform the heart to his will so that they become citizens of the kingdom. That is the purpose. So that is why God has called us to be a witness. He has chosen us because he loves us, of course, first. It says so that we can be his own possession. But he, he made a role for us as, as priests. But then as priests, our goal is to share the excellencies of, of Jesus. And the way we do that is by living a good life. It, it is also by speaking the gospel to people. Yes. But it's also by living a good life that we don't malign people when they malign us. And when we do that, then others lives are transformed by the gospel where they receive this gospel, this grace that God is giving to mankind. It says because they glorify God on the day of visitation. And the only person that gives glory to God is the Christian. See, they're the ones that desire to give glory to God. Now, other ones will give him glory in the end by him shattering their knees and they will bow to him and God will receive glory and their wrath. But in this sense, it says that they see their good deeds and glorify God. So that means that they are transforming and becoming a part of the kingdom, man. So what's this saying about God? That God desires for us to live holy lives, but that God desires for us to be a instrument in his hands to be able to serve his purpose of reaching the nation. That's, a, that's beautiful. That's wonderful. That God would desire that from us. And then just coordinating those two together, what's it say about man? Well, it says that first, Sinful man is transformed whenever they see us as Christians living a godly life. When, when we preach the gospel and it's combined with a godly life, people are saved. The Holy Spirit woos people's hearts because of those two things. People are saved. So sinful man is saved through, as Christians, our conduct on this earth and our 
the, the pre- presentation of the gospel. What's our, uh, w- w- what's our application? Well, the application is simple. Is preach the gospel and live godly. Because when we do those two things, then people come to Christ. And isn't that what we desire? A couple of verses earlier, we talked about how God has called us from darkness into this marvelous light. And if he's called us from darkness into a marvelous light, wouldn't that be something that we would desire for others to, to be a part of as well? And so that's our application for today, is that we need to testify to the excellencies of God with word and with deed. I appreciate you guys for listening, man. I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow.